out of Hero's Heart. This is Kyle Ferguson, and today I'm sitting down with Gunnar to talk about Brightwing as well as a number of other CCL happenings that are coming up. Draft starting very soon on April 17th. But Gunnar, how you doing? How's Brightwing doing? And tell me a little bit about this game. I'm doing well, Kyle. Thank you for having me. Uh, Brightwing right now in a very good spot, especially when you want one of your supports to side so can have a global which is very nice and yeah see how this game goes yeah we're watching an in-house here so nothing particularly cast in the background but a pretty crazy throwdown uh, i'm curious about a number of things here but uh first of all is brightwing kind of a towers of doom pick or i normally see you're on our big 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 maps where there aren't a lot of double soaking you know our, our sky temples where there's a four-man rotate. Uh, what, what's Brightwing's impact here on Towers of Doom? So yeah, for sure. This is not one of Brightwing's best map, but it's like a decent one. So you could have her in the mid to side soak if you run a pretty good three-man. Uh, or just have her anchor bottom as your team wants to maybe gank top or stuff like that. This game though, we usually just run, or we just run as four, because our way clear is so good. So yeah, and you can assist the offlaner if he calls you in for a TP. So the offlaner should also be winning. Yeah, so you're not only influencing the four man here, which is stacked behind Cascon, you're now helping out Sonya, who is getting crazy. In fact, you head up here immediately to go help her out. She looks like she'll be fine, but this is a top up that keeps her moving and you were free in the first place. What's kind of your thoughts there on that teleport? Yeah, so I saw that she was getting outraded a bit with Leoric, so if I TP here, uh, I'll keep her, keep her healthy and then I can take some uh, soak on top, so I get my CDR because of the level 1, which is hyper shift. So I get up my TP up pretty quickly here again, as you can see, it's 10 seconds again. And let's start talking about some of that, because Brightwing has had some small but impactful changes since the previous patch. Has your build changed much away from the hyper shift, or are things pretty much normal as can be? No, not that much. Uh, I think the only level of talent you can pick is hyper shift. Uh, there's different builds that can go on the other talents though, depending on the game. Uh, but this game, it's just what I call the standard build, which is uh, hyper shift. Then you go poly on four and uh, shield on seven and uh, blink heal. Now the unstable anomaly, that gives a little bit of hero only giant killer 2% and increases the slow. That's just about getting ganks and the slow part, right? Not necessarily the 2% damage. Yeah, the 2% damage doesn't really do much. It's mostly the slow, secures your Q and yeah, makes it easier to kill the target because you're using your W mostly to uh, CC the kill target. Sometimes you use your poly to maybe deny some counter engage. So in this game, for example, there's the Stukov swipe. If he goes for that, you can look if he goes aggressive and poly him instead. And interrupt because it has a prolonged animation that does the multiple hits. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So uh, at 13 was probably the biggest change up. We were all all about the safety dust, but then that got changed around. Have you changed your 13? So, for sure, uh, they did a nerf with what was uh, last patch or last patch again. So your set does not get increased healing from the safety dust anymore. So it's probably the worst talent on 13 now. I would most of the time pick Pixie Powder. Especially this game since the most of the damage is only spell damage. So 55 spell armor versus their team is really, really good. Yeah, I, that does make sense with the Chromie being the main artillery. This is kind of a, a crazy team over there, too. You got Dahaka, Leoric, May, and then Chromie's the one kind of filling that old Cassia, even if we go like 2017, Vala roll. Yeah, so they drafted like triple frontline with Chromie, which is pretty strong. Uh, but most of their damage is like burst, right? So you don't need uh, anything else on 13, I think, this game. In a traditional sort of squishy assassin way with like the Tracer and the Sylvanas, Brightwing can have a little bit of trouble, at least in, in Storm League. Do you feel that experience or is Brightwing just fine and as good as any healer in this situation? 
Uh, no, I feel like in Stormreach is a lot better since uh, in Stormreach people tend to miss a lot of soak. Sure. So all you do <laughs> working in Stormreach is just pick right wing and side soak. And then when you see that your TP is or that your teammates is slow, you just TP in and help them. That's fair, that's fair. Probably in uh, gold and whatnot, those Valas, Tracers and all that are looking for that Morales, but as you get mm -hmm. higher in League, the Soak becomes more and more important and Brightwing able to handle that. And also, yeah. I, I mean, I guess it's since it is such a dedicated sort of double Soak map for the four man, you're getting a lot, a lot of power out of Hyper Shift here and able to constantly use it. Yeah, I most use it uh, off cooldown if I need, but uh, I'm also trying to save it a little bit just to try to help uh, if they try to gank top. Makes perfect sense. This is uh, this is a, a wild game at the moment, but you guys are getting body blocks. Oh my god, poor Johanna. Uh, tell me a little bit about yesterday's patch that came in. Are you interested in Lily, Alex Straza? Did, did anything feel like it's going to change what you pick? Uh, so the change to the Malf, uh, the new root talent on level one is insane, I think. The, the after sleep you, one? After the root expires, you get sleep. Yeah. That seems very insane to me. Um, the Lily change, she's really good, I think, uh, before the patch. But now they just buffed her, but, but where, what she was good at, she's just better at. So when it's a Lily game, it's really, really good. But not every game is a Lily game. <laughs> do you think? Uh, do you think she's gonna break that mold of just being second support, chaos running around oh. in cups, or is that still oh, very yeah. much the strategy? Oh yeah, when when you run double support, she's the best healer in the game probably. If if the enemy team has like auto attackers, they, so you can get value from your blind. They even um they even increase the healing on her cleanse, which seemed kind of crazy. Yeah, that seems a bit crazy to me as well, since I think that cleanse is probably the best cleanse in the game. Yeah. Uh, the reason is that you get the heal obviously, and that when you get your fast feet, uh, the cooldown gets decreased as well and it's a pretty short cooldown i think it's 40 seconds space but i was a little surprised that they increased the cooldown on water dragon right like why would they nerf that heroic uh, i don't know i think 95 percent of the games i pick jugs anyway yeah so not, not not sure about that yeah, but that's kind of my experience seeing the the high tier Lily play is double support and you go cups because those are the moments you want the double support to really, really have an impact. Exactly, exactly. I, 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 tell me about that Malfurion thing. So you, you get a root and when the root expires, they fall asleep. Yes. How, doesn't that mean people just hit them and wake them up immediately? Or, or how is that uh, going to have an impact? So I think in the code is that the first like 0 0.2 or something seconds when they slept they, does, they don't really wake up so and after like they do like some uh, random attack maybe after your root they get slept so it's like doesn't really matter that much i think the follow-up on your root is just so insane that you get two cc's in one it's i don't know it seems insane to me at least yeah, okay, I feel you. So, yeah, the because I know Malganis does that. I know Anakin has that. Wait, why didn't I wake yeah. up? Everyone was hitting me with things. So there's going to be that moment, even in a focus fire environment, where people are going to be able to load up on an already standing still target who is standing still for even longer. Exactly. Gotcha. Okay, because what... I mean, my Storm League brain goes, well, I mean, Malfurion gets a root on one person. Nobody hits that person. They then are asleep while no one hits that person. <laughs> and then, And then, well, they wake up and walk away. Yeah, and uh, they also changed the D on Malf uh, on level 4, so you get two charges instead of one now. Yeah. Which is pretty insane as well, since that, that that's a build that I us usually run uh, when it's a good game for it. So you go the D on level 4 and then the D on 13. And that makes it so you can never run out of mana and you have uh, lots of uptime on your heals. Was there anything else in the patch that seemed impactful? I have no idea what to make of that false stat business. Uh, the W build faster looks really strong. I played some Stormling games today, uh, but it's bugged right now. Oh! Uh, you can stack W on minions, which is kind of annoying, so it's like permaband. But yeah. I played one game against it, and it was pretty strong. I haven't, also that... I haven't explored other talents yet, though, so... 
There's also that Tyrael thing going on, which I expect will be fixed by the end of the week. Yeah. So here you guys are pretty tightly grouped up. In fact, you are two levels behind and all five stacked up. Is the bot lane that important or how did Sonya end up down here? Uh, the bot lane is like the most important part about towers since it controls both the sapper camps on the bot side Which is what you can use to get some more shots in right? So it's pretty important that you can get both of the uh, sh uh, Towers bot or what you call it. Yeah Very nice for the map pressure since uh, now we don't really have not much to do since they're pressuring bots so hard And it's really hard to kill them the, under this uh, tower so with the lanes kind of breaking even, there's no need for Brightwing to go off and soak top or mid, even though we're behind levels or Sonya to leave, just because we have to have to get back this bottom. Yeah, we don't want the Sappers to get in here. Um, so going for, I could have gone for mid here, which that, that was a mistake for me, I think. And then I can just tip in. It's a little busy. This is a really chaotic game with a lot of frontline hammering on each other. Yeah. I also tanked an ice here, which was it's a bit intended because I didn't want my Tracer to get iced because then she would probably die. Sure. But I've seen too how much you're using Pixie Dust on yourself to not only weave in and out of these positions you're getting in, but also to maybe absorb a skill shot here and there. Yeah, sometimes you can absorb some damage if you have a blink heal up, uh, if they don't have much CC, which in this game they don't really have much. The only CC that you can get caught by is like the Haka Ice or Tongue. But I saw that they already used most of their CC, so I could tank an ISO here for my Tracer. At this point, you're leveled down, the enemy is still taking control of the map, and you guys start to go down the mid. Is that just because no sapper camps, there's no emergency, and we're waiting on Sylvanas? Yeah, basically. Uh, bottom is, we can't really do much right now. We just want to secure that uh, our Sonya gets top camp. We get the wave out mid, uh, then we can do a bottom to get the wave out again. And we also see that they were like not defending this now, so we could get some free damage on it. As they were all it's spread out bit. from it, you all move in, nearly yeah. get rid of it. The build's starting to come together and we have the full build in the background. You've got Critterize here, which is not too much of a surprise. And in general, we got that Pixie Powder, which is probably the biggest change from that just two patches ago. Is there anything or any situation that would make you go things like Critical Mist or even Hush or Phase Out? Like, is there anything Blizzard can do to make you pick other talents on Brightwing at this point? So the other build I you run, uh, I used the Cleanse CD on 4 and Critical Mist. And then on 20, uh, and then 13 you also go the Increase Healing. And then on 20 you go the Dust AoE. I'm not sure what the talent is called. Fair Protector. Yeah. So that ta talent choices I go versus slow AOE damage types of comps, so maybe like versus Alunara, uh, Arthas. Like when the enemy team have mostly slows and roots, but their damage is not like burst, right? Because when you get to 20 and they have like big AOE damage on your team, you can pl click your 20, you click your D and you heal your entire team for like 1,000 healing or something. It's pretty good. Oh, so that's interesting. So Fairy Protector isn't necessarily good when you got those like Jaina's, even a Kael'thas doing big damage, but it, being able to spread that around during those slower points, like that Arthas you brought up, is actually the place yeah. for it? Yes. Huh. That's fascinating. My brain would not say say that, but I, I could totally get what you're saying here because you'd be better off in those situations actually providing more raw healing rather than trying to protect people through the issues they're having. Yeah, this build is not seeing that much play since most of the meta right now is trying to blow up on target, right? Sure. But uh, sometimes it's a good build, uh, but not this game. Which is why we're ending back up in that pixie powder or power now that safety dust has kind of lost its mega healing edge. Yeah. And then 16, it's almost always criticized. Uh, doesn't matter what build you go. But you always ask my team if someone has minus armor because minus armor does, doesn't stack, I think. Um, oh, yeah. So then I switched out 
to Q or face out, usually face out. Uh, you can go hush if you have Q on four, which I sometimes go. If it's like a map where you stall objectives, which Towers kind of is, but I felt like we didn't really need it this game. Sure. That's an interesting. So, so you wouldn't stack hush and further range together. There's, there's no point because you're already yeah, yeah. doing what you need to with it. Like, uh, when I go hush, I usually have the Q on four because otherwise it's hard to get value from hush, right? Ah. Uh, yeah. That makes perfect sense. Do you think any of the tank changes are going to change up the healers you play, like the big Diablo nerf that's coming through for his usual life lage stuff? Of course, Tyrael bugged, but, you know, might have a presence coming up. Uh, I felt like the Tyrell change kind of nerfed his tanking aspect, but it's better on offlane now because he got more wave clear. And they buffed all these talents that you take when you're offlane in Tyrell, but they nerfed the slow one for on Tyrell, so he's a little lot worse than being a tank now. Uh, oh. But the healers that I'm playing won't change that much, I think. Maybe just toss in a little game here or there, if yeah. everyone's good. <laughs> uh, Alex is also buffed this patch. But I think that you mostly want to pick your own, like, Infernal. Maybe Volskaya. For those big dragon team fights? Yeah, fighting on the objective and getting the objective with the dragon is really good. Is that enough room for Alex Straza, or do, do you feel like there's just too big of an Ana counter, other counters that reduce healing, and she needs a full rework? I don't think she needs a full rework, but... She has like good niches uh, when you pick her right. Uh, it's kind of hard. Uh, she's kind of hard uh, into like Anna, like you said, right? But then you need to change Anna's kit, then I think, because <laughs> Anna's kit is kind of uh, good, you know? Little uh, anti heal nade when you want to stack with Alex, right? Yeah. So I don't think it's an Alex problem necessarily. And then they've also kind of, or at least we've discovered a way to work around the Ana, maybe you ban her, and then people just go Deckard with the Emerald. Yeah, that's true as well. But you have a little bit of an easy time with Deckard, I think. Are you still seeing a lot of counter Brightwing Deckard picks, or has that kind of gone away as the big heal and, and main 13 build has gone mm. away? I feel like... Decker is really good into Brightwing, but people don't really pick it. I'm not sure why. <laughs> uh, I Fair think the, everyone is just so hyped about the Stukov, so they forget <laughs> about the Decker, I guess. Um, but I usually play Decker into Brightwing and I uh, Emerald the TP target, right? Same as uh, Anna, uh, you can aid the TP, right? But usually Anna is a little bit worse because you could run a dive here with Brightwing, right? And you can just dive the Anna. Can't really do that versus Deckard. It's much harder. So what what changed in this point in the game? You guys were behind. You were behind on XP, and now a couple of chaotic team fights later, their whole front line just starts getting destroyed. Is that all giant slammer Sonya or, or your, your armor reduction? What happened here to give you guys the edge back? Uh, we, as you said, we're scaling. <laughs> Our twenty is <laughs> really really good. So we have falling sword twenty, which is insane. The Brightwing 20 with Blinkade is also insane, which gives like the Invis. It's like the best 20 uh, on Brightwing, I think, but sometimes it's an Emerald wins game, right? When you want uh, boss control. Mm. That 20 is not that great, the, the Emerald wind upgrade. But the Blink Heal upgrade is insane. Do you think it needs a nerf? I've heard it's insane for quite a while now. Um, not sure how they're gonna nerf it, right? Since the insane part is that you give the invis. Yeah. It's not the healing. The healing is irrelevant, kind of. It's only like 40 health a sec on 20. And then scaling a bit. Um, but that you get like undetected for like one second. It's like really annoying to play versus, right? Oh, interesting. I didn't know this worked on kind of the, what, the, the Sammy principle in that the initial application of the stealth gives you full unreveal or invisible yeah it's really really annoying to play versus i really don't like play versus it but it's so nice to have it in your team hey all the all the better reason to be brightwing so you don't have to face it exactly are there any 
if someone was to see a Brightwing picked on their team, and often Brightwing picks are very early on, there's a passionate Brightwing player. Uh, I, I love this interrupt here that you get, and Doc is just like, nope, no, no thank you. No. <laughs> I, I'm leaving Brightwing. Uh, what, what would you say to a Storm League team wanting to, or even an NGS team wanting to put together a Brightwing comp with an early Brightwing pick? So if you want an early Brightwing pick, I would recommend big maps. Oh. Uh, I don't think you can pick your early on like Battlefield, for example, since the map is really small, not very... Uh, you don't get much value from your hypershift, right? You want to get as much value as you can from the level one. Uh, but other than that, I think right wing, when you draft one, two or two, three, depending on which side you are, uh, it's really good. First picking here is a bit risky, maybe. But uh, two, one, two or two, three, even when you draft, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it, as supports or at least support mains are a little bit rare. Who who right now would you say is the best early pick support if just nobody is hovering anything? Probably still uh, Stukov even after patch, but mm. I could because uh, Malf has his weak side still, even though his level new level one is insane. Uh, I would probably still say Stukov since uh, you have his kit is pretty insane uh you can play versus any comp and you can he's good in the meta right now because you can blow up people with the silence and then you have the root on the 13 talent and you can disengage with swipe so awesome well always a pleasure to hear how healers can make an impact how they can help carry the game of course here's the storm a shared experience but yeah it's not all about the high octane uh, tracer plays the bright wing is very important too uh, good luck to you in the upcoming draft date. That is going to be Saturday, April 17th, as CCL Season 2 fires up. And here at YouTube, there's going to be more Learn to Play content for Heroes of the Storm. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell before you head out. And I'll see you all soon with more videos like this one.